Hey guys, it's John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the ninth studio album by pop punk alternative group Yellow Card. This album is called Lift a Snail. Now I gotta say that I was a little bit confused as to what subject matter could possibly be on an album that- Lift a sail, asshole. Oh. Lift a Sail is the first album without L.P. Parsons, founding member of Yellow Card, the drummer of the group, and honestly my heart hurts a little bit because he always added a lot to so many Yellow Card songs, a lot of energy, and now a part of them is missing. Nate Young from Anne Berlin, well about to be formerly of Anne Berlin as they break up relatively soon, but he does a great job filling in on this album. I honestly thought that even though some of these songs are slower paced, he added his own thing here and I think that he would make for a good permanent member since his time is about to be completely free. I saw a lot of people talking about Lights and Sounds, the 2006 album from Yellow Card, and comparing it to Lift a Sail. I was like, how is this even a comparison that's possible? But then I actually heard Lift a Sail. The comparison is not in terms of the sounds being similar, but in the fact that they were both very experimental albums for Yellow Card. On Lift a Sail, they're going for more of a rock sound the majority of the time, 90s influences, trance, electronic, and acoustic all make their way into this one. Rewind back to 2006 and we saw Yellow Card putting out some tracks that we probably considered weird at the time, like Martin Sheen or JFK or Two Weeks From 20, and now fast forward to 2014 and on Lift a Sail, these tracks aren't necessarily weird, it's just that a lot of them just aren't pushing any kind of sound forward whatsoever. The fact is, I don't think that this is a bad record as a whole. It's just that I feel so indifferent to very many of these tracks. Even on the most energetic of songs, it feels like they find a way to kind of take away from that energy somehow. Even on the really upbeat tracks like Crash the Gate, there's like an instrumental interlude that feels completely pointless in there that kind of distracts from the energy and the flow that this song had going. I'm all about bands moving forward and trying new things when they actually can pull it off in a really cool way, and Yellow Card does succeed at times, like on tracks like Illuminate, that had a very cool second half to it. I thought that it exuded a lot of confidence in its first three-fourths and then had a little bit more of a vulnerable side in that latter fourth of the song, and I thought that it was quite enjoyable. But the majority of the time on tracks like MSK, it's just a prime example of the experimentation gone wrong. None of these tracks are offensively bad, it's just that I'm so on the fence with a lot of it. Uh, many of these songs, like even Crash the Gates, one of the singles, just feel like they're not doing anything for me. I think they sound kind of blissful going in, and I think that they've got a nice big sound to them, and it's got a massive sound on the album, that's undeniable. But is it really all that epic or memorable? I say no. I really want to love a lot of these songs. Make Me So is one of those, but I just feel like the verses don't match the intensity that the chorus brings. The verses feel a little bit lifeless. There's not that strong instrumentation in there that I need to feel this record. And it comes through in the chorus and in the explosive guitar solo on this one, but Make Me So kind of suffers a little bit from those verses. The lyrics are definitely a strong point on that track, as well as the rest of the album. Honestly, Ryan Key's always been a great writer, and I've always admired that about him. It's just that on this album, it feels like him and Ryan Mendez are pretty much solely responsible for how this album goes. There is a huge lacking factor here on this record, and that's the fact that there's not enough violin from Sean Mackin. It's only found on a few tracks, and on the track that it's primarily featured on, MSK, I find it pretty annoying and repetitive, honestly. Ryan Key is expected to kind of handle things vocally and lyrically. His voice feels a little bit worn out at this point in his career after hearing some live clips from them playing at Warp Tour this year. I think that that's maybe what contributed to them making a less aggressive record here with Lift a Sail. What I was saying about Key and Mendez carrying this record is the fact that the guitar and the vocals are often at the forefront. There are songs that have these long instrumental interludes in there and they're just kind of like synth driven and maybe a little bit of a string section here and there. But for the most part, it's a very guitar driven record with a focus on Ryan Key. That wouldn't be so bad if he didn't struggle lyrically at times, I feel like. Tracks like The Deepest Well and even Illuminate kind of struggle lyrically, even though I do like aspects of those songs. People probably automatically think that I'm not gonna like The Deepest Well because of Matty Mullins of Memphis Mayfire, who I'm not really a fan of, but I have to say that his vocals don't really rub me the wrong way on this one. It's just that I love the verses on it so much and they feel very strong. 
and then the chorus comes in and it's nothing really at all to it. There are a few tracks that kind of snap me back into things and have me calling it attention. Transmission Home is one of those, as well as One Bedroom. Those are both singles that were released preceding this record. Transmission Home feels like your typical kind of like maybe like 90s influenced alternative jam. And while there are parts that I would have liked to have seen thrown in there, like maybe a violin from Sean Mackin or maybe some better bass work, it is a solid entry into the Yellow Card family. And One Bedroom is one that I find to be a very nice rotation of like kind of that soft start and then really breaking into it. Mendez really shines on this one all throughout the record, honestly, whenever he gets a chance to do some guitar solos, but on One Bedroom, in particular. It's got that long guitar centric outro. My Mountain is another really strong track on this album, although I feel like it's stayed maybe a little bit too long for my personal taste, but it starts... I wish the album had gone out on this note rather than going out on the slow and kind of ineffective track California. Very much piano led, kind of like a little bit down tempo. Brian feels a little bit whiny on this one, honestly. I'm all for the emotionally in touch songs, but this one just didn't feel like it was doing it in the correct way. I just talked about the end of the record there, and I also have to give a shout out to the opening track here, Convocation. Sean Mackin did a beautiful job on the string arrangements on that one. The violin sounds so nice here, and it leads perfectly in to Transmission Home. The title track, Lift a Sail, is the final song that I'm going to give a mention to here on this one. I think that it's a very beautiful song, and honestly, while it does get a little bit tiresome at times, and I think that Ryan feels like he's straining a little bit on the chorus in terms of what range he can reach, maybe that's just a personal nitpick, I honestly like this song a whole lot. It's got a lot of heart to it, and I like the comparisons that it uses. I think it's kind of talking about like starting a new chapter in life and comparing that to kind of like setting out to sea starting all over, starting fresh, and I like the idea of that. So props to Yellow Card for writing this track, and I gotta compliment Mendez for the solo on this one. It just feels so nice. The guitar really starts to come into its own in the latter half. As you can see, I'm a little bit torn on this record. I'm not feeling too strongly about a lot of the tracks, but some of them are very good at times. I think you should check it out for yourself, and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. For me, this is a 3 out of 5. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Of course, let me know your thoughts on the new Yellow Card album in the comments section down below. Don't forget to hit the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my reviews. Of course, if you missed the trailer, I'm doing a new thing on my second channel. It's called Red Hot October. It's going on all month long on Beyond ARTV. You can click right here or the link in the description down below to take you over there. I do rants news, track reviews, I've got a countdown series relaunching over there. You don't want to miss it, so definitely check out Beyond AR TV. Or you can click right here to see my last review that was of the Weezer record. Don't forget to find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Links down below. I will see you guys very soon right here on AR TV. Thank you so much for watching AR TV Beyond the Review.